Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Cowgirl Basketball Round of Casey Kendrick along with Coach Jim Littell. And, Coach, uh, obviously this week only one game to talk about. And is, it is just amazing how this league, it can be so humbling, how you can be so high one week and then question yourself the next. I'm just curious, as a coach, does it make it fun or does it make you want to pull your hair out? A little bit of both. <laughs> uh, you love playing the great competition within this league, but... Uh, there's some nights that uh, when things don't go right and other teams get hot, it's, it's pretty challenging. And uh, as you see with the standings in the league, other than Baylor, everybody scuffled a little bit, everybody struggled at times. And it's how you handle that adversity and respond after a tough outing that will define how you're going to be. It does define your season, how you respond to adversity. And, Coach, through the course of this season, you've had a couple of losses, but you really haven't had a ton of adversity. You guys have, you know, you've been close in every single ball game. So the Kansas State game, which we're going to look at the highlights from a little bit, that's new to this team, and it, it's going to be important to obviously respond from that. No question. I mean, you look at our losses before uh, to Tennessee uh, where we played well. Uh, we went to Mississippi State and, and played them to three, and then we lost to Texas in a hard-fought game. We really didn't have a bad loss at the time going into the K-State game. And again, K-State is so good. And that's the other part, Coach, before we get a break and then get to the highlights, is that when you look at this league, and you talked about it, you know, TCU can beat anybody on this on any given night. Texas can have an off night. Baylor can have an off night. They seem to stay above the fray more than most, but there is no one in this league that is fully insulated from anyone else, and the matchups are just incredible night in and night out. It is. Uh, you know, uh, when we play different teams, uh, it creates different matchup problems. It gives us an advantage at times. So uh, there are a lot of uh, strategic nights going on and planning on how to play in this league. Well, and the, the other part of that is not just that in matchups, but the coaches. Kim Mulkey, Karen Aston, Sherry Cole, Jeff Mitty, yourself. On and on and on. The coaching in this league is truly, truly phenomenal. It is. Uh, you know, K-State does a great job and, and knows how to play their personnel. Uh, they're great coaches from top to bottom. Bill Finley's been a, uh, a part of this league for many, many years. Uh, a lot of times we give ourselves too much credit as coaches because I don't think you're going to out-coach someone else on a given night. Players got to make plays and players got to make shots. You know, one coach told me once before, it's not always, I'm not necessarily trying to fool the other coach. I'm trying to fool the kids on the floor. When I'm trying to create deception, I'm trying to create deception that will fool these kids. And even though coaches may not be fooled, sometimes you can, can do that. And that's kind of the approach that I think a lot of coaches have to have. Because as you just said, it's awfully hard to out-coach a Bill Finley or these others. Absolutely. And, uh, you want to try to steal some possessions throughout the course of a game and maybe confuse some people on what you're doing defensively. But other than that, it's about players making plays. And we've seen a lot of great players through the course of this league. There's no doubt about it. Coming up on this show, we're going to talk about why this team has been so good so early. Had a great summer trip to Australia, and we caught up with the former Oklahoma State Cowgirl. We'll have that coming up. The Cowgirls also have a newcomer in Lauren Goodwin. We got a chance to catch up with her. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But we'll take our first time out, come back, and we will head to Manhattan, Kansas, and look at the Cowgirls' second matchup already this year against the Kansas State Wildcats. We'll do that as we continue right after this. The Cowgirl Basketball Roundup with Jim Littell is brought to you by Bud Light, proud friends of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the visit Stillwater.org, shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OG&E, power at the speed of life. Welcome back to the show, and Coach, we talked about matchups all the time. Now, you've already beaten Kansas State early in the year and still watered out. You knew you were going up there, and it is amazing how you knew against them and the fact that you beat them the first time that it was not a guarantee the second time and it was going to be a much different matchup, and it certainly was. Well, K-State is a, a team that makes a lot of adjustments. Uh, they've got a lot of experienced players. Uh, they got a lot of different pieces. Uh, 
to the equation. If you try to pressure them, they could have Shaylin Martin handle the ball, and she might be playing a three or a four. So uh, Coach Mitty does a good job with this team, and right now they're playing extremely well. They run some really good stuff. Let's take a look at the highlights from this one. Again, the Cowgirls in Manhattan. And Coach, uh, this was a game in which uh, early on you knew you had to get some touches in the post, and you do finally here. But Kansas State had already jumped out to that quick start. You got to get off to a better start on the road, or you're playing catch up all day long. And uh, Kaylee Jensen played extremely well for us and kept us in the ball game. And uh, we probably should have got more touches, but. Uh, uh, she was one of the bright spots in the game. One of the things we saw already in those highlights early on, Coach, offensive rebounding, you did a fantastic job of, of getting to the glass on the offensive end. We did the first time, and, and that's always been a strength of our program is offense isn't completed until you attack the glass, and uh, our, our kids did a good job of doing that. And Lauren Goodwin did a great job right there of getting to the rim. That's what she does so well. You come up with a steal, and... Well, I tell you, that young lady's got some range. It's, it's, uh, she didn't have necessarily her best game, but boy, she can shoot it from anywhere. Maria does have some range. She's gaining more confidence with each game, and I think she's going to continue to grow in that position. Coach, you guys have been through a rigorous schedule since Christmas night, and uh, it looked to me like your team, not lack of conditioning, but they looked a little tired in this one. We've had to play a lot of people, a lot of minutes, and uh, – we need to utilize our bench more and we need to get more production out of our bench, but uh, a lot of our starters have logged a lot of minutes. You know, and part of that coach is, and everybody deals with it, uh, DC, or, uh, West Virginia certainly has dealt with it, but losing Ari Combs, you, this is life after Ari. We're going to have to figure that out. We do have to figure out injuries is a part of the game, but it, uh, it changes how you play, it changes how you defend, uh, changes your depth and your rotation, but uh, as I said, injuries are part of the game, and a lot of people have that problem throughout the year. It's the ones that figure them out that uh, end up being in the playoffs at the end of the year. You guys cut it to five. They opened it right back up to ten. Another good offensive rebound there to kind of finish out the half. But down by ten, Coach, and, um, you thought maybe you, you had got something going in the second half, but their three-point shooting and their offense was just too much in this one. Page girl had a great night, and that's what uh, experienced players do when they go back home. She was one for three when we played them here, and uh, uh, she hit six threes, a career high, 20 points, a career high. And, uh, you know, it was a player that got in the flow of the game, and they found her, and she made shots. Good look right there by Lauren Goodwin to get the kick out right there. Lauren Goodwin didn't have by far her best game coach, but she never quit fighting until the until the final uh, seconds had ticked away. No, Lowe's going to compete, but she did struggle, and uh, it's it's hard to be critical of that young lady because she's had so many super performances for our team and in, in big games and. Uh, you know, it's, it's just the nature of basketball. When you play 30-plus games, you're not going to be great every night out. 40, you cut it to six. They get on a 6-0 run immediately. And Coach, I kept saying during the broadcast, you guys would play really good offense, and then you play some decent defense. You play some decent offense, okay defense. It never was in a full stretch. It was never in a run of about a six, seven minutes where you felt like, you put a ton of pressure on Kansas State. Well, we've told our team that there's going to be nights that the ball does not go in and you've got to find a way to grind it out and win defensive possessions. And we didn't do that, Casey. And sometimes when you shoot the ball poorly, our, our starting uh, one and two was six for 30 from the floor. You got to find different ways, and uh, we didn't get enough stops. Sometimes it is just difficult on the road, and that's a clear indicator just how hard it is to get a sweep in this league. We're going to step aside. The Cowgirls this summer went on a very special trip to Australia. We're going to talk about that and catch up with a former Cowgirl coming up after another timeout. Welcome back to the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. And this summer, the Oklahoma State Cowgirls got to go on an incredible international trip. They saw the Great Barrier Reef, the Sydney Opera House on a fantastic trip to Australia. And while there, the Cowgirls got a chance to catch up with former Oklahoma State Cowgirl, Tegan Cunningham. Here's Cunningham, two-foot loader. It's good. How about this 
It's a very surreal experience. I don't think anyone quite understands what it means uh, unless you've experienced college. And especially like, I know I was only there two years, but that two years was everything to me. So it's a very surreal feeling. And I think I, when I saw you guys yesterday, I left with my heart very full. It was a really weird feeling, but just to sort of see you guys and yeah, talk about college life, talk about the team and everything like that. It's just, it's a very, yeah, surreal feeling. It's hard to explain because no one, again, out here really understands the whole college atmosphere. You know, you, the bleed orange, the, you, you with your teammates 24-7, everything you do, you do together. It's just, it's such a unique concept and I am so grateful that I experienced it and I had a great bunch of girls my two years. My favourite memories would have to be, obviously, when we play the NCAA tournament. I know we didn't get as far as we probably would have liked, but just to experience that. Um, we were just playing at home, I think, just understanding the culture and you know, playing in front of these people that live and die by the Orange. And just, it's just a completely different atmosphere, and especially the OU games. I mean, they're the biggest rivalry that you're going to play in. So I think that you live for moments like that. And again, it's hard for anyone here to quite to understand it. Um, but yeah, they're the moments you kind of play basketball for. Well, I wouldn't be the player I am today without them. That, that just two years there. I mean, Coach Mattel and Coach Barkey at the time, you know, they obviously did a great job with me. Um, I think the physicality, I think even playing you guys tonight, it's just that a different ball game is very physical um, and I don't really like the contact too much. So I think that really shaped my performance of coming back to Australia and being a bit more of a physical player. Yeah, I wish you made me the player I am. I wouldn't have had the seven year, you know, WNBL career if it wasn't for I wish you. Coach, great to see Tegan. I know you guys had a fun time catching up with her. And, you know, you always talk about kids in their junior gear coming out of JUCO. They kind of, it takes them a little bit, but they're, they're desperate, ready to make an impact. And she did in her junior and senior seasons. Tegan was one of the young ladies that helped change this program along with Andrea Riley. And uh, uh, she had a lot of experience both international and through Seward County when she came here. And uh, great personality, loved playing the game, was a great teammate. Everybody loved playing with her. She uh, went back to Australia to play pro ball, and she's a legend over there. You know, and what's great is to hear her talk about with such affection, albeit just two years, her time at Oklahoma State. I think she loved it here and loved her teammates and uh, the chance to play at a high level. And, uh, you know, she goes back and plays many, many years in the pro league over there, and now she's taking a look at playing Australian Football League. And that truly amazing athlete and has had a great career. We'll talk more about that Australia trip next time, maybe. Let's take a quick time out. We're going to talk about a young lady that's only going to spend one year at Oklahoma State as a player before she's made an impact. Lauren Goodwin, we we'll catch up with her coming up next. Welcome back once again to the show and right now we want to have an opportunity to get you caught up on a young lady that has been extremely good for Oklahoma State this year. She'll only spend one year at Oklahoma State. That's because she spent time at several other schools. How did she get to Oklahoma State? Here's the answer in Lauren Goodwin's own words. Well, every time my dad got a new job, it was kind of, we were up and going. And he ended up getting a really good job at Cypress Falls High School as a football DB coach. and. A track coach. Going there, Coach Aston saw me play at a tournament right before season was about to start in Dallas, and she was the head coach at North Texas at the time. I, I really liked it. I liked her. I liked her vision for the program and the people that she was also bringing in. There were five other freshmen coming in with me as well. Right before we stepped on campus was when we found out in the media that Coach Aston was going to take the head job at Texas. Stayed a year, decided to open my recruitment for other schools, but I think I really made the right decision by going to Butler. Um, I went there and that staff was amazing. I couldn't wait to play for them. And I sat out a year, and then whenever it was time for them to you know, be able to coach me, the whole staff was fired. Again, I was hit with another roadblock, didn't know what I was gonna do, and I decided I'm gonna go home. I'm just gonna go somewhere where I can go back home and. They can see me play every night and I can see my grandparents and they can experience, you know, games that they haven't been able to before because I was so far away at Butler for two years. Went to UTSA and, you know, the rest is history kind of. I graduated with a really good degree. Decided that I was gonna get my, you know, get a graduate degree from UTSA and I went and looked into the program and the only thing that they had that was related to anything I wanted to do, which was entrepreneurship, 
was um, just a, a basic master's in business. It was a master's of business. And when I looked into it, all the, all the classes that were in the master's I had already taken. And I talked with the staff at, at OSU, like they had the program I was looking for. And met Coach Littell, Coach Annan, you know, met all the coaches. I had seen Coach Davis again and, and fell in love with everything about it. And this was just, a, it was a dream come true. The people around, I, I'm walking in the gym and everybody's saying hello to me. I didn't even, you know, I'd been there two hours maybe, me and my dad came on the visit and it just felt like home. It was kind of like in every phase that I transferred, I, I grew and I was able to experience some magical you know, thing that I, was, I wasn't going to had I stayed at the same university for four years. And I don't recommend you know, transferring three times to get that, but in my experience, and, and, and I think everybody's path in life is different and that's what mine was. Coach, again, you know, we talked about a former player in Tegan Cunningham, now we're talking about a current player, but it has just been so impressive to see this senior graduate come in here and talk about a sense of desperation. I've got one year to, to do what I want to do, and boy, she's made the most of it so far. Loves playing on a mission. Uh, she's excited to be here, uh, enjoys playing at a high level and playing against great competition, and uh, she's had a great year for us. Uh, she's uh, a uh, very dynamic guard that can score the basketball, but a lot of true point guards make the other people around them better, and Lowe's definitely done that. She certainly is a good, sees the floor very well and is a good decision maker, and she's been a great leader for the Cowgirls already, and hopefully she'll continue that. Hopefully she'll continue that in her second Bedlam matchup. That's what's up next for the Oklahoma State Cowgirls. Round two, Bedlam, this time in Norman. We'll talk about that and close up the show after this. Welcome back to the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. Casey Kendrick along with Coach Jim Littell. And Coach, we talked about taking on Kansas State twice. That series is done. Oklahoma will be done after this weekend. And, you know, just like that series, you know going to Norman will be a much different intensity for Oklahoma. And trying to get a sweep down there, that'll be a tough task. It will be. It's, it's a program that's had a lot of success. And uh, it's a prideful program. And the Bedlam game will be big for them as well. So we'll have to play really well down there and uh, it's two teams that are very similar with three experienced seniors and a couple of good young players so uh, there's a lot of parallels between our two programs this year. Cowgirls trying to sweep the Sooners for the second time in three years and then coach you get ready for Iowa State midweek and you know again the crowds have been spectacular this year we just need those folks to keep coming out and supporting this program. Absolutely our, our kids feed off of the energy of our crowd and uh, uh, we've played pretty well for the most part. Uh, I don't want to take anything away from K-State, but it's probably the only poor game that we've played throughout the year, and uh, we're ready to rebound, and it sure helps when we have a great crowd. Crowds have been spectacular all season long. Hey, we want to say thanks to Tegan Cunningham and to Lauren Goodwin for joining us. We want to say thanks to you for joining us as well. For Coach Jim Littell, I'm Casey Kendrick. We'll see you next time right here on the Cowgirl Basketball Roundup. The Cowgirl Basketball Roundup with Jim Littell is brought to you by Bud Light, proud friends of Oklahoma State Athletics, famous among friends. By the VisitStillwater.org, shop, dine, and stay partners. Be sure to shop, dine, and stay in America's friendliest college town. By Mercy Health, your life is our life's work. And by OG&E, power at the speed of life.